sword. Therefore, I pray. Unlimited red torques. That was a good episode of Fate Stay Night. Finally! No, I'm not shitting you. I don't really think that, like, I, I feel like the first episode of Stay Night was good, the second was meh, and then it just started going on a downhill spiral. But thank God that episode 10 uh, made up for how bad episode 9 was last week. Now, I did have a couple of problems with this episode. They weren't really that big, though. One of them was the more foreshadowing type thing, quote-unquote foreshadowing. It felt more like, again, it was blatantly telling you what is what, rather than leaving the audience up to kind of predict things. It's more so kind of just blatantly telling you who's what and what is doing what. Another problem that I had was the no payoff, and that was something that I had with the entire first season of Fate Zero. That was one of my issues, the fact that I know this is this is a battle royale, and that's the thing. It feels really disappointing that, like, you watch an entire fight, and then n it's not like somebody has to die, but there's only been one casualty, and that's Ryder. And other than that, there's not been anything. And like I said, it's not like anybody has to die, but, like, when Kaneth got shot in Fate Zero, can we at least get some type of payoff like that? There was the darkening of the screen at that one point where, uh, Shiro had, like, unleashed or used that other type of outward power that he had or magic. Uh, it made me mad because I still think the entire darkening of the screen thing is cheap as shit. But besides that, the screen, uh, that, that scene still looked really good. And then the only other problem that I had were, like, the still frames. There were a lot of jarring still frames. It wasn't, like, an abundance, but where they placed those still frames, I understand their purpose. But it was really, really jarring to see them like that. I feel as if it would have been better if they just put things in slow motion. Now that I'm done uh, being salty, let's get to uh, the good stuff. It was nice to see that Saber got her ass handed to her, because until then, she seemed really overpowered, compared to how she was in Fate Zero when she was just really weak, even though everybody wanted her as the quote-unquote strongest servant. Uh... I do like the shock factor within that. I don't I don't really know if that's more so shocking rather than it is just kind of like not expected, but yeah, it was still a good job. Uh, the interaction this episode, all of them were just a lot better in terms of sensibility and tone, and it was a lot more entertaining. Just seeing stuff like Gilgamesh and Shinji, Issei and Ren and Shiro, they didn't have to get all fucking goofy with the taking off the shirt and shit and stripping him down bare, near fucking naked. They just fucking asked him a question he kind of backed up uh, that's another thing that i do like uh issei's character it's a little over exaggerated but it's really nice i really do like his personality that's just me though the fucking scene with all those swords at the beginning holy shit that scene looks good once again that's more towards the blatant telling you what something is like it was doing for most of this episode i don't really feel like any of this is foreshadowing but it's whatever it the budget was I, I don't know it's always fate stay night always looks good but this episode specifically it looked like it looked a lot better than other episodes did and i'm not sure what to the point about that i'm not sure if it was the particle effects or what but it still did look really really good uh there was one thing that i noticed and this is not an issue whatsoever but i just noticed this as a fun fact you guys remember that position that soichiro was kind of standing in where like when he was talking to ren he just stood kind of still Every fucking male and like anything you foldable stands in that position. Kaneth, Karitsugu, Kire, Waver, Ryanosuke, they all did that position in Fate Zero. I just found it funny because it was just like, wow, they really haven't changed much over the years. But like I said, that wasn't really an issue. It was just something that I did notice. There's a nice OST this episode, and it still is memorable or unmemorable as fate zero was but it does sound a lot nicer in my opinion than fate zeros and it uh it it the tone just gets set better in my opinion uh i think that's about it there was one cool one liner in there that actually made sense this time and i'm assuming see this is like more so foreshadowing than telling you what somebody wants uh when gilgamesh at the end had said too much of anything is sickening I felt as if that was actually a really good one-liner, and it felt more like foreshadowing, as in, like, he wants everything on. And that's a really generic goal. It is really cliche. But I, I still think it was a good one-liner. <laughs> if that really is his goal, that's going to be really disappointing, because I was wishing it'd be something more unique than that. But it's whatever. Anyways, uh, great episode, fantastic animation, art, nice OST. It's just a good episode overall, and thank God. It made up for how terrible last week was. Uh, 
I'm still gonna leave Fate Stay Night at a 5 on Mal, though. That's nothing against the show, and that's not saying that it's bad in any way. I just don't think it's that special. It's got till episode 12 right now, until it takes its hiatus to bring its score up, but right now I just have it as a 5 on Mal, but that's just me. Uh, that's not bad, considering my mean score is a 5.2. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, comment, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Deuces!